This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Oh, the Nintendo Switch eShop. You know it, you love it. There's thousands of games on this thing, which begs the question, can I find just 10 that are actually worth buying and playing right now? Since, you know, we're all stuck at home, bored with nothing else to do, unless we're an essential worker. And if you are, thank you so much for everything you do. But we're all stuck at home, bored, looking for things to play. And I know a lot of you already know this, but I have a series on this channel where I do this. This is episode 21 now on an ongoing series of me diving into the eShop and finding games that aren't crap. <laughs> and sometimes it feels like they are few and far between. <laughs> I hope you find something that you might want to download and play. And if you don't, I have 20 other videos <laughs> you might find something. And if you still don't, well, I'm sorry. You're just being difficult. Hey, uh, like half of you that watch my videos aren't subscribed and we are so close to a million. I'll just make it happen so I can stop talking about it. Like the video if you wanna. And uh, let's start talking about some fun games. I don't know how even I missed this first game until I started making this video. It's called Void B Word. I'm not gonna say it out loud because I enjoy being monetized. And it's by far one of my favorites on the list today. I was immediately sold on the comic book inspired visuals, the fluid FPS action and awesome enemy designs. Oh, and the death animations. Void uh, B Word is a roguelike that has you traveling through space fighting for fuel, food, and scrap materials to build cool new weapons and gadgets with. The cold vacuum of space is heartless, brutal, and death is expected. That's where the game really starts throwing curveballs at you. On each die die bye bye a small robot will salvage some of the key items you manage to craft or collect on your playthrough. But you'll essentially be starting over with a new freshly unfrozen meat sack prisoner. Each one with their own pros and cons. I've had run throughs with prisoners with bad smokers cough that would randomly and alert all the enemies nearby. I also had one guy with tunnel vision, which was very frustrating. However, you might get lucky and get a prisoner with an advantage. You know, like one that doesn't cough every five seconds. Each star map is randomized, so you never know what abandoned space station you may stumble upon next. Struggle for survival, search for scrap, and make progress towards the game's main story goals. Other than the addictively fun gameplay loop, the writing and narration are high points here. With the same voice actor from the Stanley Parable, there's always a good laugh around every corner, as you blast away at aliens and fight to keep your best character alive. This is a really fun game that might tide you over while you wait for games like Metroid Prime to release one day maybe. Either way, I really like this one. What the golf? You guys remember when I reviewed Donut County? You all really seem to like that one and this next one reminds me of that. Coming at you hard and fast with a game that was nominated for nine different awards from excellence in design to outstanding achievements and winning this year's best mobile game award brought to you by a development studio who is in desperate need of a website update because holy crap are they stuck in the 90s? What the Golf. Much like the best golf games, What the Golf takes the concept of golf and throws it out the window completely in favor for ridiculous fun. The very first level in the game has you traditionally sinking the golf ball into the hole, and from there, literally nothing goes as expected, with each level keeping you guessing, laughing, and stepping up the craziness factor. Every level has challenge variations too, adding in large amounts of replayability. There's a decent sized campaign, as well as the new addition of two players levels. What the Golf is just pure chaotic fun. Hey, good job. Oh, you didn't do anything. That's the name of the next game. It's good job. You're just sat there. Did you like the video? Did you subscribe? Well, in that case, now you get a good job. <laughs> With so many eShop games blasting their way onto Switch every day, a Nintendo published game that may have slipped you by is good job. Look, we've all worked jobs we hated, but imagine if one day you could just snap and start doing whatever you wanted and nobody cared as long as the job got done. That sounds like fun. <laughs> like slingshot catapulting a projector through glass or crashing a forklift into everything. Sure, but when I do it, I almost get fired. That's a true story. Back when I worked in Australia, I worked in a hardware store and I drove a forklift and they actually, instead of firing me, took away my forklift license because I, I crashed into too many things. But, oh, but I, Nintendo lets me do it. <laughs> now, there is usually a right way of doing things that, you know, won't cost you thousands of dollars in damages and occupational health and safety finds, but hey, that's not as fun as Smash Crash breaking your way to the next promotion. Every level of the game is a diorama of possible destruction set on a floor of a tall building. Working your way through each level will take you up the floor to the very tippy top, so you better be the best 
worst worker you possibly can be and do a good job. Enter the Gungeon, it's still in my top 10 favorite eShop games on the Switch, so it's no surprise when Enter the Gungeon randomly shadow dropped on the Switch one day, it was a very exciting day for me. Initially? Ah, sadly it isn't a sequel, rather it's more of a spin-off Gungeon game, introducing us to a new 2D platformer gameplay style, rather than the top-down dungeon crawler we were used to. Okay. <laughs> in Exit the Gungeon, the story continues from where it left off, with all the same characters and personality. However, instead of exploring the Gungeon, you need to get the heck out of it before it explodes. And you know, I do love the way they took the original game and adapted it to this new style, with elements like the dodge roll avoiding all damage even while jumping now. But what I really, really don't like is now in place of finding hundreds of cool guns, your main weapon rotates through guns at random depending on how well you're playing. Your gun could randomly switch to something with all the power of flinging wet fish at the boss's feet. He's not too worried about that. <laughs> this mixed with the cramped tiny spaces the game takes place in can make the game feel frustratingly infuriating at times and death can feel out of your control. That said, the runs where you're lucky enough to get good weapon switches can be incredibly fun and for the low price of 10 bucks, this is still a quality game worth the gamble. There's no denial denying its worth, but I will say that all Exit the Gungeon makes me want to do is load back up, enter the Gungeon so I can run through a few more sessions. Hey, I bet you guys didn't know I could juggle. <laughs> I can't actually juggle. Imagine if I tried though and I just like, I always knew somehow. Um, why do we have a HD collection of all three Devil May Cry games on other systems for the low price of $30, but on the Switch, each one of these games were released separately and they're $20 each? I don't know, but I do know that the third game is the best one, and it's also the perfect place to start a journey in the franchise as it's a prequel to the original game. In my opinion, the third is by far the best of the three games. It fully embraces the psycho craziness the series became known for with its insane cutscenes, humor, and gadgets to slay demons with. The gameplay is by far the most polished, and it introduces the awesome style switching mechanic for Dante. It allows him to switch between trickster style for dodging, swordmaster style for agility, gunslinger style for firearm techniques, and royal guard to repel attacks. And later in the game, you even unlock two more, allowing you to slow enemies and create a shadow clone version of yourself. And this Nintendo Switch version of Devil May Cry 3 Special Edition adds the ability to switch between styles at any point during the combat. So this may be the best way to play my favorite Devil May Cry game the third so if that ain't worth 20 bucks I don't know what is so is it worth 20 well I just I just said it was also I wouldn't be talking about it if it was <laughs> on to the next one. Oh, you know a game has confidence in its audio design when it asks you to wear headphones while playing and in the case of Shinsekai into the depths it has every right to be confident and I don't know if that's how you pronounce Shinsekai but that's what I'm going with. It's an underwater Metroidvania, and just like dunking your head into a fishbowl, the underwater world is muffled. Every sound, from the hit of your tool to the gurgling bubbles of you running out of oxygen, sounds eerily beautiful. In Shinsekai, you ain't playing in what we know as the ocean. Rather, the entire world has succumbed to a water apocalypse, and you play as one of the last survivors on Earth. Although the worst is yet to come, as the water begins freezing over, and you need to dive deeper and deeper to escape its chilling touch. Screw that. I am so scared of the ocean. <laughs> Mining for resources and searching for equipment is key. Upgrading your suit to withstand the depths is the only way to progress further down. This game can get tough. Running out of oxygen is always a concern and while you can pick up more tanks as you explore, your tanks also take damage when you're hit by enemies or survive big drops. Shinsekai is a great Metroidvania that may get a little bit repetitive at times, but it's redeemed by its fantastic atmosphere, fun boss fights, and, you know, making playing underwater actually fun seems to be something a lot of devs struggle with. Take your group thing, take your group thing, baby. In almost all of these eShop videos, I like to try and sneak in at least one point-and-click style adventure game. And today's graphic adventure game of choice is After Party, developed by Night School, who previously gave us the award-winning Oxenfree. In After 
party, you play as two lifelong friends and teenagers, Milo and Lola, who find themselves unexpectedly in hell with no recollection of how they came to be there. Fortunately for them, I guess, they arrived in hell right at closing time and managed to escape their personal barbaric sentence to eternal damnation. So until then, they set about the nine circles of hell trying to find a way back to Earth. Eventually, they meet the devil himself and learn that there is a way out of hell and that's to challenge Lucifer to a drink off. And if they win, they earn their freedom. Where this game absolutely shines is in the writing and voice acting. Every actor's performance is outstanding and draws you into this hilarious and messed up underworld. While most of the game is played out in a linear fashion, there are moments that have you choose which missions or tasks you'd prefer to tackle. And that can take you down completely different paths and meeting whole new characters, which makes for very different playthroughs and even multiple endings. This game reminds me of my also beloved monkey Island series for a lot of reasons. Specifically so with the ability to drink different kinds of alcohol to unlock different dialogue options. It's very reminiscent of insult sword fighting with Guybrush Threepwood. This game, it might not be for everyone as it's very slow paced and you do need to be absorbed into the story and appreciative of the genre, but I absolutely loved it. Also, the devil is voiced by Dave Fenoy, so... That gets instant brownie points from me. <laughs> Lonely Mountain is another game on this list that takes an incredibly simple concept and just makes it stupidly fun to play. In this game, you're given a series of mountains and your only goal is to get to the bottom. And how you do that is completely up to you. Actually, that's kind of like good job. I guess there's three games on this list that take a simple concept and make it stupidly fun. Sure, there's always an obvious path you could follow, but if you decide you see a much quicker and probably less orthodox way of getting down the mountain, the game will be very lenient as long as you are hitting those checkpoints and not breaking a few ribs along the way. But rest assured, if you do mess up, the game will quickly reset and take you back to the last checkpoint so you can try again. <laughs> I don't know, man. The bicycle mechanics are on point. The controls are tight and responsive. Just pushing your bike along the paths is rewardingly enjoyable. The visuals are vibrant and gorgeous. There are loads of different paths and ways to explore on each mountain, several different types of challenges to complete as well. Lonely Mountain can be equal parts relaxing and stressful, but it's always fun. Oh, wrong way. Hi. I debated putting this next game on the list. <gasps> hey, Squarespace, right? Yeah, no, it's just usually I'm the one that comes in here and you've completely thrown me off. I don't know what I was- I got this. I made a website with Squarespace, but y'all already know about that. Thank you to everyone that went over and checked it out. But now, it's time for you, and you, to make your own website with Squarespace. You know, Squarespace really is the all-in-one platform for making websites just like that. Whether it's for your business or your own personal reasons. I just don't really get what's happening here. Can I cut your tongue? Well, let me finish. All you gotta do is head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you're finally ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash beat-em-ups to get 10% of your first purchase of a domain or a website. I mean, when it's this easy, why not? Uh, yeah. Hey, you were using a website to sell used towels, am I correct? How's that going for you? Wait, no, I didn't, did I? It's just such a good idea. It really is. Wait a second, I know what's going on here. I'm not me. You, you, you are <laughs> me. <laughs> so you finally figured it out, yes. It is I! Look, I wrote this script. I completely understand what's happening here, but I think the audience is gonna be a little lost, so we should probably yeah, just we should probably just get back to the video. Okay, bye. <laughs> anyway, I debated putting this next game on the list because it's bad. It's technically a very very bad game. It's called Snakey Bus. <laughs> Look, I, I, man, I can't stop playing it. I wanted to buy this game for two reasons. One, it reminded me of that other game Cluster Truck I liked, and two, and more importantly, it's like that old, old snake game I used to play on my Nokia in high school, except bigger, and with buses! It's actually really humorous to me because the strategy here is exactly the same strategy I remember using back in the day with that snake game. As your snake bus grows, make sure not to trap yourself in, stick to the outer lanes or the outer sides of the screen so you have room to move around inside the wall you build, and just whatever you do, 
Do not crash into yourself. Or in the case of Snakey Bus, crash into anything else. Your bus grows the more people you pick up and drop off at a location. And I absolutely love the chaos that ensues when your bus gets to the point that it's wrapped around the block four times and you can see all the arcs where you've previously jumped. The game is far from perfect or even good. It's not a good game, like I said. It's bad. The frame rate starts to plummet the more you fill the screen with bus. Most of the levels are awful. In fact, this one is the only one I actually like <laughs> out of all the levels, and there's quite a few. I hit so many glitches from skyrocketing out of bounds to whenever I tried to use the Switch's in-game 30 second record, there's like a 50-50 chance the game will just freeze and I'll have to restart it. The load screens take way too long. I can't tell you how bad this game is. I am trying to say that even though this game is awful, for $10, I keep coming back to this one level trying to beat my score and having so much fun. Do with that what you will. Also, you can actually be the truck from Cluster Truck if you want. And as far as I can see, this game is in no way related to Cluster Truck other than it's kind of similar and the truck is in the game. Well, uh, Journey to the Strange Planet randomly out of nowhere dropped on the Switch last week. So let's take a look at it. Honestly, it kind of makes you wonder if there was a direct initially planned for last week. Because this is by no means a small release. This is, in my opinion, quite a big get for the Switch. And there it is. <laughs> It's honestly one of the bigger, more impressive Switch releases we've had this year. Published by 505 Games, I played this game in co-op back on Xbox when it initially released in January and had an absolute blast. And this port holds up pretty well considering how visually intense the game is. While the graphics have taken a hit and the colors don't pop quite as much as I would like, it still looks really great here, especially in handheld mode. Journey is an adventure Metroidvania style game that has you crashed on a strange planet, exploring the world for upgrades, and slaughtering alien life forms left and right. It's punched full of humor, from the funny quips the ship's AI gives you like every time you die and it has to rebuild you, to the sheer amount of weird, insane, and hilarious fake commercials the TV will play as you progress through the story. My friend and I honestly had so much fun just standing in the ship and watching these commercials. There was one that was like an obvious dig to EA. It's hilarious. And for that reason and many more, I do recommend bringing a friend along for the journey as we made short work of independently exploring the world for collectibles and upgrades, earning ourselves a 100% completion rating in just a few days. And I like that he could explore that way, I could explore this way and just do things independently of each other. It was a cool experience. And it's it's another one that might hold you over until this mysterious Metroid game appears since, you know, first person shooter, strange planets, aliens, Metroidvania. It's the, it's in the, it's in the genre. <laughs> I don't know why I'm getting angry. We did it. <laughs> we did it. Another 10. Look at that. I play too many games. I hope you found something today that you that you might like, that you've downloaded, that you'll play. Let me know if you did, if you tried any of these out, or if you already have them and you already love them. Just, like, just drop that down below in the comments. Like the video while you're down there. Here's something I haven't said in a while. Hair flip on that subscribe button. I really haven't said that in a while. I just forgot that was a thing I did. <laughs> hey, you guys are the freaking best. I love making these videos for you and I and I hope you still enjoy them. <laughs> That's it. Bye.